Christmas and the best gift of all. I love Christmas. Yeah. I love it so much. It's okay. Oh, no, it's good. It's good. Oh, no. Are you <laughs> it's people? good. It's good. It's fine. <gasps> it's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's just the birth of our Savior. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> all right. Well, that's the message you're getting from Mike today. My message, on the other hand, <clears throat> is Christmas is fabulous, much like our hats. Anyway, okay, so so one of the things I wanted to talk, to talk to you all about was just what Christmas was like when I was a kid. And I and let's we have to acknowledge that when I was a kid was a lot longer ago than when you were a kid. So a we just we just need to acknowledge that. Otherwise, what I'm sharing is not going to make sense. Sure. Okay. Because I was a kid at a time where there was no Netflix. <laughs> there was no like Amazon video. The I mean, VHS, do you all even know what VHS is? Was just kind of like popular? Do you know what VHS is? Yeah. Okay, what is it? It's the big box thing and you put your your box tapes in there. Your box That's tapes? how I watched, you know, Lion King and Really? One on one dimension. Yes. Wow. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, with it. All right. What and I was even like before that. Ugh. So the only way I was able to watch things like Charlie Brown Christmas and The Grinch and Rudolph and all of those things that we love to watch, well, at least I did around Christmas time, like I had to wait for the day, the one time that it aired on TV. Like NBC would show Tar Charlie Brown Christmas at seven o'clock. And if you didn't sit in front of your TV at seven o'clock, you missed it until next Christmas. And you couldn't even pause. Like you had to like run and get a snack during commercial. And my, my, one of my favorite memories is my brother like sitting in the living room, I'm getting a snack and he's yelling, it's back on! And you would like run back in and dive so you could finish watching it. Because if like, again, if you missed it, you missed it. And, it, and I loved like the anticipation of when we got to sit down and watch those together and uh, the, the tree twinkling. And like, it was just like, it's like the benefit of like not having everything on demand, yes, right? Is there was special. Yes, it was, and yes. that's what they called it. It yes. was like the special. It that's was right, like yeah. the Charlie Brown Christmas special, yeah. the Rudolph Christmas. Like, yeah. Yes, because it was. I can barely see you with this hanging in front of my face. <laughs> I can barely see. But you. But it's such a good look on you. Okay, thank you for yeah, saying you're that. You're welcome. Yeah. So what about you? What All about right. So, so Christmas. Christmas. All right. So it's funny. My <laughs> so uh, every Christmas we would have people over, like extended family, like many of us, right in our house. I don't know if your family is like this, but for my family, our house was like the hub. So like whenever there was a thing that happened, it was your a house. family gathering, it was our house, right? So fun. Yeah, yeah it's great. It was great. Um, and so uh, and so every Christmas, you know, family would come over. One Christmas morning, gosh, we had had breakfast before people came over. And so there was breakfast. It was like, you know, grits and eggs and pancakes Ooh. and bacon. It was like a good time, right? Oh, hungry. Well, afterward, you know, my dad typically did the cleanup uh, after meals. And so he did the cleanup up and he's cleaning up the bacon and he put the bacon into like a Ziploc baggie and then just put the Ziploc baggie on the counter. Great. That makes total sense. Everyone comes over for, for Christmas morning. And while we're like opening gifts, like someone, I don't remember who, but someone catches my dad just like eating bacon out of this <laughs> Ziploc bag. Like it's, like it's chips. <laughs> And, we, and that is honestly like one of my favorite childhood memories for Christmas is just like the family Dad's being next. around. Dad's just like, like their Lay's potato chips just eating bacon out of a bag. Oh, I love it. And it was just so, it's just so funny. But I think just having the whole family around and having those memories and things like that. And that's what, what, what Christmas reminds me of. It's Christmas season for me. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> the thing about these stories is that there's just such joy in them, right? Like, it's just so much fun, so much happiness, so much, like, the warm, fuzzy memories. It's just, like, those are just some of the best things about Christmas is thinking about, like, thinking back to the little things, the simple things that were just so fun and so joy-filled. And we thought we'd share that with you, but we also wanted to talk to you about something else that brings joy. All right, so yeah, we're, we're talking about, you know, what else brings joy? Well, uh, <laughs> turn in your Bible to Luke 2, 8 through 20, and you about to find out. Uh, so we're going to talk oh. about what else brings joy. Was oh. that aggressive? It, it was It was the appropriate amount of aggressive because <laughs> we are talking about the gospel. There you go. I'm just passionate about Jesus. Absolutely. All well, right. at least now you are. At the sure beginning, you, you were now. not. Well, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> all right, whatever. It's okay. I mean, all it's right. fine. All Christmas right. is fine. That's a direct quotation. 
Mike Haynes. Christmas I mean, is Christmas fine. is fine. Oh, that's so ironic given what we're about to talk about. So, um, so, 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 you know, we're in Luke 2 and here's the situation, you know, Jesus has just been born. Um, and, and so you've got some, some shepherds who are out and they're in a field and they're tending over the sheep. And so they're watching the sheep, make sure lions don't eat them. As and shepherds tend to do. So they're out there, they're tending the sheep. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's actually pretty good. And, um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and, and basically, they're out there minding their own business. Well, and then suddenly, all of a sudden, something happens that is going to change these dudes' life forever. They will never forget it. They will talk about it at shepherd conventions for the next 30 years, right? And so here's what happens. It's uh, Luke 2, starting in verse 8. Um, or actually, we'll, we'll go to verse 9. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. Wouldn't we all be <laughs> angels up here? Yeah, absolutely. All right. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in snugly strips of cloth <laughs> lying in a manger. And so then the angels kind of get together and they're all in front of the, and they put on a concert, you know, for the, yep. for the shepherds, which I think was probably a little bit less terrifying. It was like, oh, they sing. Yeah. If someone sings, then you know that they're not going right. to hurt There's you. There's no angry singing. No one, no one sings to you before they hurt you. <laughs> well, I, not, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Well, well, maybe we'll find out. Um, so, so, so they sing and, and it's great. And the, and the shepherds decide to go to Bethlehem. They want to check out this, this thing. The Messiah's been born, baby Jesus. Yeah. These, these shepherds were Jewish. They knew about the Messiah. They were yeah. like, oh, this is awesome. They're, they're waiting. Waiting for, for the Messiah. Anticipation. Right. Like yeah. the one time you get to watch Santa Claus is coming to death. It's, it's just <laughs> like that. And so they go and they go check out, you know, the baby Jesus. And, and after they see him, after they see baby Jesus lying in the, you know, strips of cloth lying in the manger, uh, here's what happens. Verse 20, the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. Crazy. I mean, this has got to be like way better than waiting for the one time that you get to see Rudolph on TV when I, I think was a so. kid. Yeah. I, that's got to be like I think so. times a gajillion. This was a very much anticipated event. This was not just looking forward to the next football game that's on TV or the one time that you get to see the Christmas special on TV. Like, you know, the amount of anticipation that you probably feel around Christmas time because it's just a fun time of year. This was so much more. The the anticipation and the joy surrounding this event was just compounded even more so than anything that we are as you know, the most excited we've ever been about something. This this one knocks it out of the park. Because this was this was a person who was going to change everything. This was so looked forward to. And he's here and they run and they're so excited and they see him in person. And here's the thing, here's the thing. It says, and the shepherds returned, meaning going, they went back to the fields to tend the sheep. They went back to everyday life. They went back to their job. They went back to the dinner table. They went, they went back, you know how it feels after Christmas is over and there's a little bit of that like slump that we sometimes feel? Oh, yeah. Not always, but I mean, yeah. a lot of people have a hard time with after Christmas because yeah. it feels like the anticipation is over, the joy is over. So they go back, they go back and it says glorifying and praising God. So while they went back to everyday life, regular life, normal life, it was not normal. It was not regular anymore because something huge had happened. Something big had changed, but it wasn't their everyday life that had changed. Something else had changed within them. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I don't know what Christmas is like for you, right? I mean, maybe for you, Christmas is this big, joyous thing. We were talking about family memories, and, yeah. and maybe it's like that for you. It's also a possibility that Christmas is actually just a really hard season because it reminds you of, of that you don't have those dynamics in your family. Your yeah. family is not – it's not a joyful time when you all get together or, or there's something really hard that you've experienced around the Christmas season, and that gets brought up every time it's the Christmas – you know, I, I recognize that that might be the dynamics. You know, I think the beautiful thing about the story with the shepherds is that – externally what happened like externally to them in their lives all of that was kind of the same but 
what the Christmas season, right, the very first Christmas season, encountering baby Jesus, encountering Jesus, what that changed wasn't external, it was internal. That for them, something internal happened. And, and so my hope is that for you, for me, for all of us, right, like even if for you the Christmas season is like just fine, which is where I am, you know, like <laughs> my hope is that for us, the reality of, of Jesus, the Messiah coming to be the savior of the world, that that would change something in you and then no matter what happens externally that the joy of the christmas season will be found in our heart's response to encountering jesus the end the end the end <laughs>